So you guys are playing with Metallica, the cult opening for Metallica, right? Yeah. On Justice for All? Yeah. And you tell Lars that you guys need kind of a different kind of vibing sound, and that's how the Black Album No, came. it didn't happen that's, like that. I mean, that's what I heard. That's what I heard. How, how do well, we Well, you know, in those days, we were, like I said before, I said, you know, single guys, <laughs> you know, young. So we'd go to the Gentleman's Club, you know, and they would play. In Atlanta. Probably Atlanta, yeah. Dallas, all the great southern bells, if you will. And <laughs> they would play ACDC. They would play Guns N' Roses. They would play Motley Crue, Def Leppard, but no Metallica. And me and Lars would sit there. <laughs> and Lars would say, well, how come they don't play any Metallica songs? I said, well, Lars, girls can't dance to Metallica. <laughs> He's like, well, what do you mean? And I'm like, well... You guys play too fast, and it's not, it's above the waist, it's not below the waist, you know, it's, it's not groove. Listen to ACDC, that's danceable, you know. Let's go up here, let me show you this airstream. Yeah, that's cool. So, he's like, well, okay, and so he called me up, he's, he said, come over to the studio, and they, they rented this place called One on One, it was on Lancashire. It was owned by a drummer named Yoshiki from a band called X Japan, and it was the first time I saw Pro Tools, Bob Rock was producing the record. And Lars said, we're going to slow the whole record down and we're going to groove like ACDC. And I walked in and they were doing the tracking for Inner Sandman. It had a four bar riff. It was a one bar riff with a four bar turnaround. So it had that sort of rolling feel to it. Start over. Right, boom, go, ba, boom, boom, right? Good tempo. And I went, oh my God, dude, this is it. Fast forward to Guns N' Roses Metallica Stadium Tour. We're now back in Atlanta. We go, I think it was Gold Club or one of those. Door opens. <laughs> Gentlemen's Club. <laughs> <laughs> Lars is like, yeah! And uh, funny. check out this Airstream. Isn't this cool? This is so cool, these Airstreams, man. So, there was something to it. I, 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 I take claim for the inspiration for the record, but probably not. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's the word on the street that it's because of you uh, that that album came out. You know, we, we're really close friends, and, you know, it's great to have him as a friend. You know, he's, and Lars always says it, and he'll say about himself, he says, you know, some people misunderstand me. I go, well, you're, first of all, he's the brains behind Metallica. He always has been, him and James. But Lars is just... Super intelligent. He's got this massive machine that he knows how great they are at certain aspects of rock and roll. And they made this epic album, Black, you know, which just brought them into a whole other dimension, right? So I was around when that was going on, which is really cool too, to be, to be, to be able to tell these stories that maybe, <laughs> maybe are folklore a little bit, but you know, it's cool. This is Matt Sorum, and I'm here with Zoli from Ocean Hills. Thank you from Pioneer Town, California in the Yucca Valley. <laughs>